What's good? What's good, Philly family? We back again. We in the crib. You feel me? I ain't got my hat on today, man. I felt like, you know, just letting it out so y'all can see, you know, what's really going on. Yeah, I need to retwist. Yeah, I need to line up. But we're going to get that soon. Get it back right. But today was another day of training camp, man. But last night, the top 10 dropped, right? And I understand people have an opinion of what Jalen Hurts really should be, where he should be ranked, and, you know, what respect should be put on his name. But I don't understand the disrespect. The peers voted him. What is it? What does it matter? Like, I'm not understanding what we got going on. But you ain't always got to understand, you know, to really understand. You feel me? So that's that. But um, yeah, Jalen Hurts top three. So let's really talk about it, man. So Jalen Hurts was voted top three last night by his peers. You know, it, it, it's it's really an honor, man, as an Eagle fan to see one of ours again for the top three. Yes, Carson Wentz was originally one of the quarterbacks after the 2017 season who was voted in the top three. And people are making a joke about it and bringing it up, saying history repeats itself. Jalen Hurts, Carson Wentz are totally different people. They are not the same. They, they, they are not equipped in the same manner. They are not genetically built the same. Carson Wentz is Carson Wentz. I, I I pray the best for the brother, but I can't emphasize anymore. They are two different people. Jalen Hurst is built different. He has manifested things that, you know, he is going to be a great quarterback in this league. And he has showed that his progression from year to year has showed you he can be elite. But people fail to realize what's really going on, man. It's, it's really easy for me to tell you, but if you look at it, the dynamic is from the time he was at Alabama with Nick Saban to the time he's been here. So all that Lincoln Riley, all those guys down the line have been implemented to make him better. And he has adapted his game everywhere he's went. Okay. You can say what you want about the big game or whatever, him not winning. You can make any narrative you want, but today, he had an interception again. People want to talk about it. Well, last year he had three interceptions. This year he has two so far. You know what I'm saying? So let's, I mean, he had a few last year. Yeah, he's going to have a few this year. It's practice, bro. I'd rather him be throwing interceptions now than down the line inside of games. You have to throw the interception to know it don't work. You don't want to just try things. You got to know the outcome is chess. It's not checkers. We're playing chess. So let's be real about the situation, man. Let's just keep it honest. Jalen Hurts, he's been making some good plays, some outstanding plays, some elite plays. But every day going to be different, man. Every day is going to change what's going on, man. You're going to make mistakes here. You're going to make mistakes there. Let's just hope we ain't continuing to make the same mistakes over and over. But on to further news, Miles Jack was also signed over over the weekend. He came in today, him and Zach Cunningham, and Miles Jack was getting first-team reps. That tells me a little something. That enlightens me a little bit. I might be wrong, but maybe Christian Ellis wasn't doing exactly what was told to us. Because I don't think there is a neglect of faith in inside of the Kobe Dean from us as an organization. We have the faith. We let TJ Edwards and Kaiser White go knowing that we had the Kobe Dean. The faith was in the Kobe Dean. The keys have been the Kobe Deans. He is green dot. I'm not worried about what the Kobe Dean is bringing to the table. Let's get that understood now. Nicholas Morrow, my nose itching. Oh, bless me. Nicholas Morrow, Christian Ellis, Sean Bradley, Davion Taylor, who's already cut, those guys wasn't cutting it, man. They wasn't living up to the standard that the Eagles look forward to every day in practice, out of practice. He wasn't doing it. He wasn't cutting the beans. So, you know, today, Miles Jack, first team reps. You know, I don't know how good he looks because I don't see tape. But, you know what I'm saying, if you're getting first team reps, 
and it's on a consistent basis. Again, hey, we looking good. But, you know, the Eagles with a good defense, solid defense, a serviceable linebacker like a Miles Jack or Zach Cunningham. Zach Cunningham is very big, Brandon Trusa. He's 6'3", 240 pounds. The man is big. You know, Miles Jack is 6'1", like, you know, but 6'3", 240, that, that, it's a big man, dog. If Zach Cunningham could come in here and really be, you know, a, a crucial part of this rotation at linebacker if we necessarily need him, I think he could be a crucial part. Like, we're looking at a defense that, you know, the defensive line look good. The cornerbacks look good. The safety situation is shaky, but, you know, it's people moving up the ladder, you know. So we're going to see what happens with that. It looks like Sidney Brown and Kevon Wallace, at, to me, in some reason, is fighting for that second spot. And we've seen Kevon Wallace in these situations, man. So I don't know if he 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 has tapped into his game over this last offseason or what, but I'm hoping he did. And if he did, then it's great. We're looking good. You know what I'm saying? We can move forward with somebody that knows the system. And if not, I, I believe Sidney Brown should be the guy. You know, if you want to give Kevon Wallace one more shot, to be in something, you know, significant to this team. They're not understand. But at the same time, you know, you have to put the best man on the field. In that same case, Alameda Zakia is on the offensive side. They say he has started to impress. He's moving up the ladder. He's getting closer to getting some of these first team reps. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to see what happens, man, because just because you start strong in camp don't mean you will finish strong. Camp is a good stretch. You know what I'm saying? We still got three uh, joint practices to go. We still have three uh, preseason games to go. Guys can move up and down the roster from day to day, man. Your performance is day to day. You're paying the bills every day. Every day the rent is due. And I don't plan on being late with the rent, man, as Jalen Hurts said. You know what I'm saying? So it's significant right now. But, you know, leaps and bounds have come. Yeah. You can see it and how the how the how the players that he played with feel about him. And the Eagles are on the trajectory to be great. You know what I'm saying? So when you think about the Eagles, man, just know, you know, here moving forward, we are set up to be something you 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 might not understand. You you might not comprehend. It might not be something you're adequately adapted to. But we are. We we ready to be winners. And you know, we only got one Super Bowl, but that one Super Bowl you know, solidified us as an organization coming from where we came from, you know, being established at the time we was without a Super Bowl for so long. Now we're looking at the trajectory forward. <sighs> you know, it's kind of getting old already that we won a Super Bowl, you know, five years ago. It's what have you done for me lately? Yes, we just came off a of Super Bowl one. Yes, they just, they just, you know, voted my boy top three. On his birthday, you know, it, it, it's something we have to, you know, understand. And, and, you know, right now, I think we're in a good place. Um, Nicobe Dean, uh, Nick Seriani said Nicobe Dean is fine. You know, he has, I don't know if he practiced today. I know James Bradbury came back today. He was practicing. He was limited from what I heard. Um, you know, injuries right now, it's not significant. I don't think the Kobe Dean's injury is significant. I'm not worried, but if you were worried, we just brought in two guys. I don't think either one of those guys is somebody you trust your defense in their hands. You know what I'm saying? Like they're serviceable. They're decent veterans, but the Kobe Dean is the leader of this defense, man. And I told you this way back when the Kobe Dean and, and, and is a part of what Howie Roseman is building on both sides of the ball. The Kobe Dean and these defensive pieces have some type of feeling. So yeah, with that being said, man, this is the last, you know, this, this, this the end. I'm gonna get back to y'all, man. But this has been another one. Until next time.